Holy Ghost, don't leave me. I'm praying, Holy Ghost, don't leave me. I'm praying, Holy Ghost, don't leave me. Yeah, guide me on my way. Oh, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we come with thanksgiving in our heart, Lord, that you have allowed us to see another day that you have woke us this morning early, clothing our right mind and giving us the activities of our limbs. And Lord, you started us on our way. And Father, we just want to say thank you. And Lord, today, as we begin our Bible study, we ask in the name of Jesus that we become before you as empty vessels looking to be filled with your word, your will, and your way. Give us understanding of your word and help us, Lord, to be strong and walk in your word. And Father, help us to know the tricks and the devices of Satan that he used, Father, to draw us away from you, to draw us away from your word. Lord, help us to be strong, especially in this time. And Father, I ask a special blessing upon all of the medical field people, doctors and nurses and, and, and receptionists and everyone that has to deal with this virus, uh, this plague that is, is going around right now. We're being tested. The world is being tested. But Lord, I ask that you help us to be humble, help us to follow you, but Lord, most of all, to keep our faith in you. Father, I ask that you will anoint me right now. Anoint my mind to think the thoughts you would have me to think. To anoint my tongue, my lips, and my lungs to speak the words that you would have me to speak. Let all that I do, let it be pleasing in your sight, Father. Anoint the ears of your people to receive your word. I ask in the name of Jesus that you apply the ground of their hearts, Father. And that your word may be planted in their hearts, Lord. And Lord, that after your word is planted in our heart, Father, that we start to give the fruit that your word will bring forth through us if we allow it to, Father. Bless our Bible study, Father. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Uh, we, our Bible study is still in the book of Genesis. We're in the 22nd chapter of Genesis. We stopped on week before last because we didn't have it last week. Uh, at the 11th verse, here we find in Genesis, uh, in this particular scripture, that God had told Abraham to offer his son, the promised son, up. And before I get started with Bible study, I want to tie a couple of things in. Since we have been plagued, tested with this virus, as believers, our faith has also been tested by man and, 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 and they are challenging our faith. And they, I've come to find out that we can know scripture but not understand scripture. And now we are being challenged to go and flex our spiritual muscles of faith by showing the world and everybody around us that the coronavirus, we're not afraid of. We shouldn't be afraid. We don't have a spirit of fear. This has nothing to do with being afraid. Many are quoting scripture after scripture after scripture to say we should continue on doing whatever it is that we want to do. There's one problem that I have with that. Because we got to keep in mind that Satan, no scripture. He tried Jesus with scripture. There's one thing that make even when we're using scripture be wrong. What is this one thing then? 
Now, if I'm following scripture, what can make it wrong? It's simple. Any time that I got to disobey God, disobey his will, what am I saying? The Bible tells us that we should honor those that have authority over us. Whether it's your supervisor on your job, whether it's the mayor of the city, whether it's the sheriff of the county, whether it's the representative that represents those counties, whether it's the senator that represents that area, whether it's the governor of that state, or whether it's the president of the United States, us as believers, we are to lead the way to the world in obedience. The only time that we are not supposed to obey the laws of the land is when they conflict with the word of God. This virus plague that we're experiencing right now is what God has spoken to us about. So us as believers that have been studying the word of God, we know what we are looking at. But even then, that gives us no right to disobey the laws when they put them out there. When we disobey, or to say, I, I don't, I'm not afraid, I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to stay at home, I'm going to do whatever I want to do, that is a selfish and self-centered way to do what you want to do instead of you doing what God say for us to do. As believers, we are to be an example to how to be obedient. If there's nothing else that I've learned about the word of God, there's one thing that I did learn that stands out more than anything else. And that one thing is, is obedience. Is what God looked for us to do and to be an obedient child. But we become disobedient adults because I don't feel like I want to stay at home. I feel like I want to go. Well, you have that choice. God gave us a free will. We can obey him. And if we cannot obey the laws of the land, we cannot obey those that have authority over us, how can we obey God when God then told us that we should obey these things? So, I have uh, isolated myself. My wife and I, we um, put ourselves on a two-week isolation to find out if we are clear or not. Now, let's just say, oh, God going to take care of me. True. God take care of you through obedience, not disobedience. The scripture says that it, the sun shine on the just as well as the unjust. The rain rain on the just as well as the unjust. Now, since we know these things are supposed to happen, and we are seeing them happen, when they say it for us, we, as believers, we should have been the first one to obey. Why? Because we want to be a light to the world. Now, back to what I was saying, okay, God going to take care. That's true. So we go and do whatever we want to do. We are not studying no coronavirus. We are mingling. We're doing our thing. Now, what about the people who don't know Christ then? Who he don't have their heads around. What are you doing to them? Because the people looking on, they say, you know what? If they can go out, I can go out. If God going to take care of them, he'll take care of me. Why? Because when he died, he died for everybody. The whole world. The whole human race. Which there's only one race, and that's the human race. Everything else, you know, we divided it up. But 
true love. Let's be obedient. I'm not staying at home because I, I fear the coronavirus. I'm not at home because I fear death. I'm at home because I'm obedient to what they asked us to do. And because I'm obedient to what they asked us to do, I'm obedient to what God has told us to do. Give honor to whom honor is due. Give respect to whom respect is due. Obey those that have authority over you. We what when we are going against them to say, well, oh no, I'm gonna do what I want to do, we are actually rebelling. And that can cause other problems by rebelling. If you want to flex your muscles, flex your muscles in faith by being obedient to God. Walking in his will and walking in his way. Not your own. We're not proving anything by doing what we want to do. And he said, woe unto the one that called his brothers and sisters to stone. I don't want to cause anyone else to stone. And if I'm out here doing whatever I want to do, I would make God an unjust God and an unfair God because he allowed me to do what I want to do, but nobody else can do it. God is not an unjust God. He is a just God. But he is also a God of judgment. He is a God of wrath. Don't disobey. We need to obey. Don't let twisted scripture lead you the wrong way. I always remember this one thing. If you don't remember nothing else. God worked through obedience. Christ obeyed every law. Christ paid taxes to Caesar. Christ did everything that he was supposed to do that was asked of him. He didn't call a rebellion. And this is what we'll be doing is calling a rebellion by bucking the system. We're supposed to be an example. With that being said, maybe we'll get back to some more of that later, but right now we get the Bible study. And here we find that Abraham is being obedient to God. Abraham has... Abraham has been obedient. He gave up his first son that he wasn't supposed to have in the first place with Ishmael. He gave up Haggai to send her off. I know that he had feelings for her. He had to let his nephew Lot go when Lot chose what side he wanted to be on and move down to Sodom. And now he's been tested with this son that God had promised him. Once again, God worked through obedience, not disobedience. If you want to be blessed by God, obey God. You want God to protect you, obey God. Listen to what he said. He said, if my word abide in you and you abide in my word, he said, whatsoever you ask in Jesus' name, you shall receive that, no doubt. But Bible study. Tonight, we're going to start with verse 11. I'm going to take verse 11 and verse 12 and tie them together. Since Deacon Delson or Deacon Forte, none of them are here. They usually read the scripture for us, and I really enjoy that. But tonight, I, I, I'm going to do the work myself. And verse 11 says, and, and get your Bible and go along with me. Verse 11 said, And the angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here am I. And he said, Lay not thine hand upon the lad, neither do thou anything unto him. For now I know that you fear God, seeing thou hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, from me. That's verse 11 and verse 12. So here we see that God accepted the sacrifice and the run of Abraham's heart. He called out to stop Abraham from sacrificing Isaac. When Abraham reached out to take the knife to slay his son, God knew that Abraham was totally surrendered to him. Totally surrendered to him. To be totally surrendered to God. Meaning we got to be totally obedient to God. We cannot do things as we feel like it should be done. We have to do things exactly like God said for it to be done. Abraham could have took a lamb or something up there and said, Lord, I, I know you don't want me to kill my son because God don't, he, he don't look for dead sacrifices of people. 
The animals were the sacrifices that, that were symbolic to the coming of Christ. So God knew that Abraham's heart belonged to him totally and absolutely. Nothing, absolutely nothing stood between Abraham and God. God would sacrifice, I mean, Abraham, I'm sorry, Abraham would sacrifice anything and do anything for God. Abraham would obey God no matter the sacrifice or the cost, even if I have to stay at home or somebody seem like they telling me what to do. God is the one that tell me what to do, and he has directed me to humble myself before the law of this land within Abraham's heart. He offered this the supreme sacrifice to God. When in his heart, Abraham had made the absolute surrender of himself to God. God is after the heart of people, the surrender of their spirit to him, not the slaying of their body. God won't live in sacrifices. God won't the body of people, but he won't living bodies, not dead bodies. God won't a human sacrifice, but he wants the sacrifice living, not dead. Present your body as a living sacrifice, Romans 12. God wants people to sacrifice their lives, their hearts, their spirit, their bodies to him. He wants people to surrender themselves totally and absolutely, but he wants them living, not dead. It is always, it is always the willingness, the surrender of the heart that makes the offering of a sacrifice acceptable to God. God is after the heart not the sacrifice. We have to keep in mind, for us to obey the laws of the land, it takes sacrifice. We know that there's people that have to go to work. They are the sole bread one of their family, and, and, and they have to go to work. We pray God gonna take care of them. Why? Because they are doing what they have to do. But those of us that don't have to do something, if God send you to do something, I would be the first one to tell you, you need to obey God. I don't care what things look like. I don't care what's going on on the outside of God. Say, go out there. You need to be going out there. But just because you said, don't nobody tell me what to do. Man, don't tell me how to live. I'm back to that again. Back to the lesson. But all of this actually ties in together because we're talking about obedience. Total obedience. Verse 13, verse 13, and, and true love, if y'all have some questions or, or something, send it to me, and when I come back home for the next Bible study, whatever question you have, I'll answer those questions then. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, behind him a ram caught in the thicket by his horn. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered him up for a blunt offering in the stead of his son. So instead of his son, God provided what he needed. God provided a substitute sacrifice just as he did for us. The name of the sacrifice he sent for us is Jesus Christ. He sent a ram in the place of Isaac. And he sent Jesus in the place of us. The ram died in Isaac's place, and Jesus died in our place. So it was a substitute. God always provided for us those things that we need. God gave Abraham a ram to offer as a substitute for Isaac. We have to keep in mind that whatever we need, God, he got it. Verse 14 it says, and Abraham called the name of that place Jehovah Jireh, as it is said to this day, in the mount of the Lord, it shall be seen. So Abraham worshiped God and memorialized the place forever. He named the place the mountain of the Lord, Jehovah Jireh, the Hebrew mean the Lord provides. And 
he did. The Lord met Abraham's need. He gave Abraham a substitute sacrifice instead of his son. The sacrifice of Isaac is a type or a symbol or a picture, a prosthetic, a prosthetic or the sacrifice of Christ at Calvary, the sacrifice of God's very own son, the Lord Jesus Christ for the sins of the world. Abraham was asked to sacrifice his son, his own son, for God. God has sacrificed his only son for man. Abraham believed that God would raise up his son if need be. God did raise up his own son, the Lord Jesus Christ. It can even be said that Isaac, was a good as I mean Isaac was a good as dead sacrifice in the heart of Abraham during the three days of traveling before the resurrection. The resurrection of both Isaac and Christ took place three days after their death. Abraham for those three days had made up his mind that his son had to die because God had told him to do it. Absolute and total obedience. He could have come up with many excuses. You're talking about my son. We have excuses to not want to obey the laws. We supposed to be an example in everything that we do. Not in some things. The Lamb of God, the Lord Jesus Christ, will provide as a substitute for all of mankind. Not some of mankind, but all of mankind. Now we're verse 14, and now we'll go to verse 15. Sorry about Oh, getting a little dry. Verse 15 says, And the angel of the Lord called unto Abraham out of heaven the second time. So here now the angel of the Lord called out Abraham again, his voice apparently sounding out from heaven. Abraham was to be rewarded for his obedience. And no greater reward could be given. Let me say that again. Abraham, because of his obedience to God, his willingness to give his only son, that, well, the son of promise, God had asked him to sacrifice the son to him. There are not many people who sacrifice their son. Abraham did, although he didn't have to go through with it completely, but in his mind, he had already done it. And now, because of his obedience, not because of his disobedience, but because of his obedience, Abraham is about to be rewarded. Verse 16 says, And said, By myself,